Welcome to the Gym Breakthrough Podcast. This show is about one thing and one thing only, turning your gym into a thriving business you love to own. So if you want to know what it really takes to grow your membership, make more money, and build a rock-solid community of raving fans, you've come to the right place. All this information is 100% free, so please subscribe to and review our podcast. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Gym Breakthrough Podcast. I am Marcus Gerzi, and today I am joined by veteran gym owner, Coach Brian Bender. Brian is one of our rockstar Gym Breakthrough clients and runs a world-class training facility, Elevated Kinetics in Lafayette, Colorado, which is just outside of Boulder. And when Brian started with us, like so many gym owners, he was really struggling with some pretty serious burnout and was on the verge of either selling his gym or maybe even shutting his doors if he couldn't get it turned around. But Brian was passionate about serving his community and wanted to give it a serious go to see if he could get his business back on track and have it really become the business he really truly once loved to own. So now Brian is back in the game and he is growing his newly revitalized business, which is now 100% in line with his values and his vision. And most importantly, he's running a business he actually loves to own. Brian, it is such a pleasure to have you on here with us today. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Marcus. I love your glasses. I have the same blue blockers. I just have the black frames. So uh, I wear them at night though. Go team fancy pants. At yeah. night while you're sleeping? Well, sometimes I fall asleep with them on, but I try to get them off first. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So, all right. So, hey, before we get into your incredible evolution with Elevated Kinetics and how you basically completely turned your business around over the past six months, tell us a little bit about yourself, Brian. How long have you been in the game now? Sure, I'm gonna try to give you the short version, but uh, I was a coach even even when I was in high school. I was coaching hockey and we did off ice sessions. I finally, I got certified in 2004, but that was after I had a really bad snowboarding accident and I completely shattered my spine. I was in a brace from my, basically my, and I, you know, the doctors were like, you can't do anything you love to do again. But what made me better was strength training. So that that cured my pain, deadlifting and squatting. Anyway, uh, kind of evolution from there. I'm doing training on the side. I'm a part-time hockey coach, part-time strength coach. Eventually find CrossFit in uh, 2008, I think. My buddy came back from the Army, was like, dude, you got to try this. And all my personal trainer buddies were like, no, that stuff's dangerous. Never do that. Of course, uh, we do you know, uh, Angie in a park. It smoked me. I got hooked and I found a CrossFit gym after that and I fell in love with the uh, the whole process. Um, you know, I had been kicked out of a Globo for Olympic weightlifting and dropping the bars and I heard that you could drop bars at CrossFit, so it was great. Um, I, I got my, you know, my level one uh, soon after that because I was applying it to off-ice strength and conditioning for hockey kids uh, and then I uh, actually started coaching at the, the CrossFit gym that I was a member of and, and loved it. and. Uh, I was working in an office, I was in a financial company and just decided, hey, this is my passion. Uh, I want to I wanna start to move into trying to actually make this a living. So I, I opened up in my garage in uh, early 2013, uh, blew it up, way too many people in my garage, so we rented a space, uh, blew that thing up a few years later, blew out the wall, and uh, it's, been, it's been a crazy ride ever since. So. Awesome, man. So you've been in, I mean, basically you've been in strength conditioning most of your, I mean, your entire adult life in one way or the other from coaching. And it basically just kept evolving over the years until eventually you had it out of your garage, then got into your own brick and mortar and it's been growing ever since. So um, that is a hell of a stretch. Um, what has your journey been like as a gym owner over the years? It's been a roller coaster to say the least. It was, uh, you know, emotionally charged. You know, when you first open you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and it's it's just awesome because it's this new thing that you're doing. Um, I knew absolutely nothing about about business, and I still feel like I don't really. I'm trying to learn a little bit as I go. Um, but you know, after the expansion in 16 or 17, that's when it got really crazy because we tried to move to this collaborative health model, and we discovered, you know, a few years later that it was like that was way too much uh, to handle and people didn't really want to go to the same place for all the things, Cairo, physical therapy, massage, everything under the sun. And so over over time, we've kind of gone back to our original roots. But uh, instead of kind of 
like copying what everybody else was doing. We really defined what it is that, that we do best. And, and now, uh, we have that product. Awesome. Love that. So what was your life like just prior to us working together? What, what wasn't working for you? So I didn't actually quite know this until we started working together. I knew something was off. Uh, I thought the model was a good idea. Um, and I, I actually still think it's a good idea, but it's just not, um, I don't think the consumers are, are ripe for it. Um, it just didn't, you know, I wasn't pumped every single day to come into the gym and do what I do. And I think it's because I was doing so many things that other people were doing. And, and now when I, when I walk through the door, it's everything that I've created and it's, I feel great about, about coming in. So it just, it wasn't aligned with, uh, you know, what I believe in necessarily. It was more, you know, he and she like doing this style of fitness. And so I'm just gonna, you know, morph to to please them, rather than saying, "Hey guys, I've been doing this for a long time. This is what works. Let's let's do it this way and, and try it out." So it just wasn't quite matched with uh, with my philosophies. Well, and if I can point out too, you know, what it looked like to me was that you know, you had started pretty. You were very honest because you you were kind of untouched when you first start, like we all are, right? When we start the business, right? And you were following along with diff, you know, trends and other business mentors and other friend, you know, fellow gym owners and whatnot, and kind of just doing what everyone else was doing because this is what seemed like the right thing to do, and kind of got led astray by a lot of these industry norms and things that are kind of like passed along as how you should be running a gym. And this is what everyone's doing now, so I guess I'm gonna start doing that. And you inherited quite a few of those things which really only got you to a place to where you had fallen out of love with the business. I mean, you were, you were frustrated. It wasn't, the model wasn't working. It was literally taking you away from what you wanted. Like the, if that program would have actually been successful, or at least the configuration that I saw, it was actually going to take you further and further away from what you really actually realized that you wanted out of this business. And, you know, being able to transition that for you was, was a huge win, I think for us. So let me ask you this. So was there a breaking point for you? And and what were you kind of considering as your options at that point? Like, where were you with this? Because you were pretty close to the line when we initially chatted. Yeah, yeah I um, it actually almost came to me. Well, I had a I had a former coach who expressed interest in buying the gym. Uh, I had twin babies in February, and this was a couple months later. You guys that have kids, you know, there's no sleep at all. I'm just at my wits end and I'm about to just let this thing go and I'm just going to get some, some other job in an office somewhere, which is the point of, I wanted to do this. So I didn't have to do that. Um, so that fell through. It came, it came out that they, they actually had no interest in buying it. They were just, uh, they just wanted to see the books because they were going to start another gym up the road anyway. And so at that point I had to decide, am I just going to fold this thing up and put it on the market and basically, sell the equipment in it and just go do something else or should I dig in and do make it what I want to make it and and grow and so that's what it was it was pretty emotional you know a lot of uh late nights and you know my wife will tell you how how bad this gets sometimes but you know I, I was at the breaking point where I was just ready to be done and then um got reinvigorated so that's what it's all about man I mean you're you're a shining example, in my opinion, of the type of gym owners we cannot afford to lose in this space because you you have been eating, sleeping, and dreaming human movement since you were in high school and have so much value that you bring to your community that was about to go away simply because you had followed along with the industry trends and built something that you no longer really believed in, so therefore you, you weren't excited about it, you weren't willing to give it 100% the same way um, as you once had, and as you knew you could, you were out of alignment, you were out of integrity with what you really wanted. And people don't realize, cause that kind of creeps up on us. I know it's happened to me numerous times in my career. And you know, not until all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, this isn't what I want. This isn't what I'm doing. And you either make the decision to, to get off the train, right. Or to step it up and, and point it in the right direction. So, um, I'm really glad that we were able to catch you at that time and that you 
you made that decision to stick around because I think you have a lot that you're going to contribute to your community moving forward. So we started working together a little over six months ago or so now, and you dug in right away. You were clearly ready to shake things up. What was your motivation for showing up 100% like you did? Uh, I, that's how I do stuff. I'm not, I don't really go halfway in. Like if I decide that I'm going to do something, I'm going to go with it 100%. And it's, uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want my toes in the water and, and not see the result. I don't need to delay anything. I know that I'm ripping the bandaid off with this whole business. So there was basically no, no holds barred. It was just, let's go, let's change it. Let's get everything done. Let's make this thing what I want to do. And, um, and you showed me how, and I'll be forever grateful for that. So, uh, it was my pleasure. And so you made a ton of changes. I mean, you made all the changes. I mean, yeah. let's go through some of the, the things that happened. I mean, we went from uh, initially helping downsize the facility to make it actually fit your, first of all, to make the numbers work and to make sure that it was actually a, a fostering more community like it once was because you had identified that you actually liked it much more when it was a slightly smaller space because the classes were more intimate, people were more all over each other, which we kind of initially, I think, believe as the gym owner, like we just got to keep getting bigger and more and larger and everything is better, but it's actually not in many cases. And so it was downsizing the space. Then it was a total rebrand of the name itself, right? So we changed from Ideal Collaborative to Elevated Kinetics and you completely redesigned not just the name, but the look, the vibe, the color palette. And then in the downsizing, you completely redialed in the space with paint and how equipment was laid out and as of recently, as of last week, or no, earlier this week, when you're sending me pictures of like now the finished, the finished front room, you guys did an amazing job in, in transforming that entire front walk-in area, members area, into something that was once like your quintessential CrossFit gym, which was very utilitarian, it was very functional from a standpoint of like cubbies here, places to sit there and so on. But there was no vibe. There was nothing telling a story. There wasn't anything that was really positioning you guys the way that you really, the way that you show up for them on the floor, you were not making that same impression on people when they first walked in. And now you have this beautiful facility, beautiful front space that you walk into with the front desk area and branding and a dope retail wall and members lounge area and all that. Uh, came together beautifully. But outside of like the brand and the space, as far as the business systems themselves, what would you say have been some of the most significant changes that you've made in order to get it in line with your vision? Uh, one of the things we worked on together um, was to, to hold a meeting with my coaches to decide what looks like the perfect session and what should be graded instead of, you know, some arbitrary thing that I created once six years ago for, you know, if I'm shadowing their, their sessions, but get their feedback and let them actually contribute what they think is a phenomenal coach session. And we actually came out with uh, a lot of changes to the hour, like just little stuff, but it goes a long way. Like, like just doing a wrap up at the end. It's something that we do with all of our strength and conditioning kids. Um, we talk about what went well, what didn't go well, all that stuff. We do that now standard with all of our classes, but that wasn't the thing that makes the biggest difference. The thing, and this is by your suggestion, we have every athlete listed, uh, in that form and it's, you know, what did you say? Was it cued? Was it corrected? All this kind of stuff. And it just contributes to the individualization of the class model, which is, which is phenomenal. So that's the, that's the biggest one, but we've, we've kind of changed all the, all this, all the systems to make it you know, resonate more with, with the way that we do things. But that was the biggest uh, change, I think, so far behind the scenes. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, um, how can I say, not surprised per se, but I, I guess, yeah, pleasantly surprised just to see like what you and your team came up with, because you guys are, I mean, you guys, you guys have created, I mean, weightlifting champions, you guys have served, I mean, if not thousands of people um, over the years. And you know, you guys really know what you're doing. And we were able to take a lot of what you guys were kind of letting happen based on like hope or based on like, well, if Brian runs a class, this happens. And then if so-and-so runs a class, that other thing happens and take basically all the best of everything and standardize it to create that new experience that is the elevated kinetics experience. And that's a, a phenomenal way to show your members 
you know, like this, that's the, that's the product. That's what they're interacting with, right? That's what they get to experience day in and day out. And it makes a massive difference on the, on how the value is perceived, right? And that helped with the brand shift and all that stuff too. Um, but outside of that, I know we revamped your whole sales process, content strategy. I mean, literally we went through the, the ringer top to bottom and rewrote everything to get things in alignment. And some things were small shifts because you guys were already doing some things right. Some things, we tore things all the way down to the studs and rebuilt from scratch. But all in all, you the, the outcome was you, you've now completely reformatted this thing to actually match what you have in your heart, which actually makes you excited to come back into the business day in and day out and to make an impact on your community and to provide good jobs for your staff. Um, there were a lot of things we, I think, simplified for you too. You had quite a few things around from how compensation and memberships and all that stuff worked that was just, wasn't even working, right? The, the numbers didn't work. It was complicated to track and to keep up with. And now we have all this stuff in alignment. So what would you say was your, have been your biggest accomplishments since working with Jim Breakthrough? Uh, I love the, the intro, the new intro and sales process. It was so natural for me. And I don't know if you did this on purpose just because you knew my personality, but it was the first time I tried it, it worked basically. Like it was, it was just so natural for me to, to do, um, just taking somebody through an intro and showing them, you know, rather than doing something extremely canned, it was more, um, you know, my, my personality. And they were like, sign me up whenever. And I was like, wow, I thought this would take five or six times, but it was like, boom, right there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. So I'd say that. Love it. I'm glad that's working so well for you. Um, what about your life outside the gym, Brian? Cause like you mentioned, you've got two, I mean, brand new twins. I mean, they're coming up on a year now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In February. So yeah. you're still in the throes of craziness and plus two at the same time is double the fun, right? But so how has, has making all these changes and fixing your business made an impact on your personal life? How, has it affected that at all? It, yeah, for sure. Um, especially kind of when we went through the, we, you know, as you showed me the daily routine, um, so it's a, it's a morning routine and I feel so good about what I'm going to get done for the entire day, but that's just like, uh, I'm charged up and I know why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. But on the back end of that, uh, we went through time blocking. And so now everything that I need to get done is essentially for, you know, back end tasks that are done for the gym, more on the business rather than in the business things are done in the first two hours of every day. And they're all like Monday uh, is related, Tuesday is related. That's huge because when I actually shut off at night, I can be present for for my family, which is awesome. Um, but it is crazy with twins because I, you know, sometimes I can't get to the morning routines until later, but uh, it's- uh, They come late morning biggest, routines. Yeah, that's been the biggest game changer for sure. And uh, you know, it's down to the point where I'm using this productivity app software and I'm like allocating these different tasks to different days a month out. And it's like, I just open it up in the morning and I'm like, oh cool, I gotta do these four things. And I just check the boxes and I feel great. And then I, then I go on defense, so to speak, and I'm taking meetings and stuff with clients for the rest of the day. So love that. That, what you just said about how it makes you, gives you the ability to be more present at home honestly, Brian, is, is really what this is all about. Because, you know, most of us start our business because we want to, you know, be in control of our own destiny and our own schedule and the freedoms and, and perks that come of owning and operating your own business, not to mention one where you're, you know, having all these positive exchanges and making all this great impact on people's lives. Like, this is a really cool business. But most gym owners rarely get out of that crazy startup mode of just balls to the wall, just whatever it takes, I'm working nights, I'm working weekends, you know, getting up early, staying late, just anything it takes. And they never really get out of that. And although that is part of the process of turning nothing into something, that's certainly not sustainable for the long term. And you were able to make this shift and, you know, having twins, which is craziness at home, right? Having one is already craziness at home for many of us. But having twins at home while going through all of this stuff, you know, and yet still able to 
make things easier and to be more present at work and be more present at home, it makes everything better. So congratulations to you, man. That's, uh, that's really, I'm so happy to hear that, man. That's what this is all about. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So you've got a big year plan for 2020. What's next for you in Elevated Kinetics? Well, we're still putting the finishing touches on some of the stuff. We got more graphics coming to the front. Um, the uh, I got to put a bunch of stuff on the walls still, but it's that those are all little things. We're we're hosting our annual weightlifting meet in uh, March, which is fun because we're actually doing it at another location, and it took a while to find the location. Um, but it's we're pumped because it's going to be so so big, and uh, it's just that's really cool. Um, beyond that, we got another summer lined up for strength and conditioning at the local high school and, you know, just refining the product more and more and more for, for our members, which, which is just awesome. So just, uh, refining the programming, you know, I'm, I'm taking a much more personal approach. I'm actually looking at people's numbers each week, which is almost like what we do with personal training, but it's in a group program Mm -hmm. and they're loving it and it's, everybody's getting a lot fitter. So it's good. That's what it's all about, man. All right, final question. If you could give one piece of advice to another gym owner, what would it be? I would say, let's see, create instead of uh, regurgitate. Oh, I like that. Yeah, create, don't regurgitate. And I don't mean like the nuts and bolts stuff that's tried and true, like uh, your billing and your systems and you don't need to recreate a member management system or how you do that stuff. But what I mean is like, this is what I've learned through this whole process is by defining how I want my sessions to run the actual programming, the experience, like every little thing I'm pumped to come in every day and run it. And I'm pumped to show my coaches what I want the product to be. Uh, but we're, we're creating it and that's the biggest, the biggest learning experience. So yeah. Love that man. Great advice. Brian, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your journey with us. You have done and continue to do an amazing job. In, in making this business yours and doing something that, that means something to you, to your team, to your community. So hat off to you again. I mean, you showed up with at 100% throughout this entire program. And I know that you have made so many massive changes you know, in such a short amount of time. I know what that takes to do and you never backed off. And that's why you, you were able to turn this thing around in such a short amount of time. And I could not be more excited for everything that's ahead for you here in 2020, man. Keep up the great work. Super excited for you. Thank you. And just thank you for everything. Thank you for holding my hand through all this stuff. And it's, uh, it's been pretty emotional throughout the whole process. And you've, you've been the guide and it's been amazing. So you've really changed the trajectory and I, I'll be forever grateful. So thank you for everything. My pleasure, Brian, honestly. Um, And I want to say thank you guys for all of you who joined us today. I hope this episode was inspiring for you. Um, If you're interested in learning how we can help you turn your gym into a thriving business that you will actually love to own um, and help you increase new member enrollments and grow your average client value and build a tribe of loyal raving fans um, so you can actually finally start earning a great living doing what you love, I invite you to book a free breakthrough call with me at gymbreakthrough.com slash apply. And during that call, we'll get to know each other and we'll see where you are and where you're trying to go and see if we can help you get there any faster. So thanks again for joining us today. We'll see you again on the next episode. Until then, bye-bye.